Hey guys, Decav13 here, and welcome back to some more Let's Play Rune Factory 5. Uh, so once again, we're going to be doing one of these jumping around episodes with events, uh, since I want to do some stuff off screen. Uh, you know, it occurred to me, I haven't done a single one of Beatrice's events yet, <laughs> so let's do hers. I don't know what's going on with that King's Game one I saw at the end of the last episode. Nothing popped up, so... And all, I mean, all this stuff is, so... Might as well do this, right? Well... Ah, uh, John, you've come at an opportune time. Here's your vegetable stew. Ooh, here it is. While we were chatting, Beatrice mentioned that she was curious about how the restaurant stew tasted. So here we are. We're all having some. Would you like a bite, John? Don't mind if I do. My word! There's steam billowing off of it! Never seen someone so amazed by stew. It's filled to the absolute brim with piping hot vegetables. I think I could grow accustomed to eating something like this. Eat it while it's hot! Mm, the potatoes are boiled to perfection, and the carrots have just the perfect amount of bite left to them. Seems like I could burn my tongue clean off. I gotta let it cool down. Um... Uh-oh. Ah! Hot, hot, hot! Beatrice, are you alright? Mm, perfectly fine. Just kind of hot. Here, drink some water. You're going to burn your tongue. Phew, that was quite the shock. I can scarcely believe it was so hot. Well, duh. That's what happens when you start eating it right, right off the stove. The only normal thing to do is let it cool off first. The normal thing to do, you say? Um... Yeah, um, you blow on stew before you eat it. I was wondering why you all did that. This explains everything. I have to blow on hot food, too. Pardon my breach in etiquette. This is the first time I've eaten a meal warmer than room temperature. What kind of person that eats lukewarm food? Sounds like she had to walk a long way from her room to the kitchen or something. Yes. Yeah, that is strange. Just what kind of life has she been living? They suss out who Beatrice really is. This could go badly. Uh, did your parents leave food out for you because they had to go to work? And that's why it was always lukewarm? Aha, uh -huh, so that's what her deal is, huh? Poor Beatrice. Let's not pry too much. I'll give it a try. Hot! <sighs> <sighs> However, but it tastes scrumptious. Absolutely delicious. I simply cannot wait to eat more. Thank goodness. That's great. Seriously, have as much as you want. I'm surprised to hear that a princess of all people has never eaten a hot meal. Hmm, yeah, really. Alright, so we'll pick this up on the next day. Alright, let's continue Priscilla's event. Priscilla, uh, fucking Beatrice. Oh, clearly not thinking straight right now. Just in time, John. Would you please stop this woman? But what, what's she doing? Uh, it can't be anything good. I'm guessing. I can't tell if Palmo is angry or what, but they've been like this for a while, and I'm just about near my wit's end. What in the world is going on? My stars! Goodness, what a smashing vase! I'll put this lovely flower in it. No, no, that's a water pitcher. We drink out of it. We can wrap that darling little cactus up in this red cloak and he'll look just like a royal guardsman. That's a curtain and the spines will ruin it. Sure, it might make a half-decent scarecrow, but still. My stars! If you stacked up these luminescent boxes, you could sh keep a shop open late into the evening, yes? lamppost made of paper lanterns? That's actually kind of awesome, but a fire hazard. Too dangerous. You get the idea. Uh, yeah, I see. A curious wooden block. Whatever could it be? It has a small opening. Look, but don't touch. You break it, you buy it. Aha! This must be a mousetrap. Oh no. If I hurry, I can find a place infested with vermin and put it to work. 
Wait a moment. <laughs> no, wait, that's a vanity case made from aromatic wood. It's worth more than I make in a year. Pardon me, but are you saying this bauble is expensive? It doesn't look like much. Are you raised in a monster barn? Whatever qualifies for normal where you come from, this ain't it. Staring at tens of eyes. Oh god. I think Palmo's about to have like heart attack or something. You know, if you keep screwing around like this, Palmo's gonna flip his lid. Would you please leave before you end up pestering our other customers? Shock and awe! This is splendiferous! The apex of taste! I can see the light and how radical its radiance is! Uh, apparently he likes this. The hell? Galloping galoshes of goodness, young lady! You are brimming with, ident with inventive ideas! <laughs> oh, seems like I get along just fine, Riker. My spirit sings with singular superbitude of it all. It's like a gut punch of palliative perfection. What do you make of this? Come on, Palma, that's just a regular, par that's just a regular partition screen, isn't it? Quite the conundrum. What have we here? Oh, I see now. This would make a most convenient apparatus for displaying a dress. <gasps> An open display? Sweet sublimity! The fact that she can get on Palma's level definitely proves she's abnormal. Uh... <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, I guess it makes sense Palmo and Beatrice would have uh, some similar eccentricities. Alright then. Alright, back to Beatrice's event. Not Priscilla, John. Fucking... Oh, man. It's too late night for me doing this shit. I got work in the morning, I'm fucking tired. <laughs> What is the matter, John? I'm kind of worried about you. My stars! Oh dear, you came all the way here to see me. Thank you. Looks like you've been a little down in the dumps. If there's anything I can do to help, just say the word. Since you so kindly offered, might I bend your ear for a moment? I feel as though I'm nothing but a bother to the other townsfolk. Is this about what happened at Palmo's? You shouldn't worry about that. I keep hearing that I'm not normal, or that I lack common sense. I mean, you are a princess. There's only so much you can do about that. Indeed. Yes, I suppose so. I do understand. The only life I've ever known was the one I led in the palace. I've only ever eaten food that has grown cold because I had to wait while it was tested for poison. P poison Yes. Before I could eat, one of our servants always tasted my meals to verify that I had that no one had tampered with them. And I lacked knowledge of everyday objects because I had no say in our household furnishing, uh, furnishings or accoutrements. Furthermore, most of the, those items were considered national treasures, so I couldn't simply handle them whenever I wanted. Whoa. That's why I was so thrilled to browse and touch and examine things the way I did. I had no idea, Beatrice. But now, every time I go on an innocent little stroll, I feel frightened frightened that my own subjects will come to despise me. You don't have to worry about that. The people of Rigbarth care about you. Including yourself, John? Of course. You must have some kind of goal, Beatrice. That's what brought you to this town, isn't it? Yes, quite right. I have an important mission, and I must see its completion for the sake of my elder sister, my younger brother, and all of Norad. This must have something to do with the highly sensitive matters of state Reinhardt mentioned when they first moved here. I don't know what your mission is, and I won't ask, but I'll support you however I can. Thank you ever so much. Countless lives are relying on me to find to find my courage. Are you certain you wish to aid me? That's right. Then I shall gladly take you up on your offer. Go with my deepest gratitude, John. Oh, um, you're welcome. <laughs> Alright, okay, so we got more events now. Uh, I didn't do Lucas's part two, did I? 
Might as well do that one real quick, then we'll get started on someone else's part three. I know Martin's... Well, Martin's doesn't pop up yet for the same reason that uh, I couldn't get Beatrice's to pop up. It's that I have to wait until noon for that one to trigger. So yeah, I might tackle Martin a little later. What the hell? There, there's a fucking orange up there! Fucking j just just sitting there. I just happened to glance up and see that. What the fuck? I'm thinking. Yeah, well, let's do Priscilla's next. Watch out, I don't see Cecil's other one. I should check and see. Hello there. I hear you've been putting on more magic shows for the townsfolk lately. Indeed, I have. People enjoy my performances. Which motivates me to do more of them. <laughs> yeah, everyone loves your magic tricks. They are not tricks. Tricks. They are acts of divine... Mm -hmm. Not now, it'll just make things complicated. The other day, a few parents from around town came and spoke to me. They're worried because their children find your show so entertaining that they, that they don't come home until after dark. Even I've had to scold Lucy and Julian for staying out too late. <sighs> None of us like to think about our children walking alone in the dark. They could hurt themselves or catch a cold from the evening chill. Sooner or later, an accident is bound to happen. As a mother, as a doctor, and as the mayor, I can't take that risk. But I also don't want to deprive the children of something they enjoy. So please finish your performances while the sun is still up. That way everyone can return home safely. Hmm. Understood. I I'll do as you ask. Thank you. It's much appreciated. Hmm. Seeing the children happy made me happy. I thought entertaining them with longer was an act of benevolence, but I see it's not that simple. I forgot to consider how my actions might affect others and cause their parents concern. That was terribly careless of me. Hereafter, I will pay much more attention to such things. Well, it's good to keep in mind, Lucas. Oh, I guess this is just a full-blown event for Lucas. Oh, okay. Oh, I guess I did do his part, too. Oh, alright. Uh, I guess I'll cut here, then, and we'll start up Lucas's third event. Alright, on to the next part of Lu uh, yeah, Lucas's event. I got it right. Oh, magic tricks. Or, miracles. And with a snap of my fingers... Oh, how odd. The apple in Terry's pocket is now atop my head. Wow. That was so neat. No matter how many times I watch it happen, it's still such a surprise. Hmm. With quick fingers and a little misdirection, anyone can make it look like things are disappearing and reappearing. But this stuff... He pulls it off better than any magician I've ever seen. Oh, I know. Hey, Mr. Lucas. Do you think you maybe... Of course I can. Really? Uh, cool! Can you do it right now? Very well. As you wish. these pretty flowers blooming around me. What a splendid sight. Hmm, no kidding. I like to think I've debunked my fair share of tricks, but he's got me stumped. I don't think I'll ever manage to figure out his secret. <laughs> That's because it's actually a miracle. How do you like that, Hina? Wow. I don't like it. I love it. This is so much fun, I could watch it forever! Great. Okay. Next. Hey, Mr. Lucas, how about... Hmm... Well, I can certainly try. One, two, three! Oh. Ah! 
Oh. Yuki? Granny Yuki, are you okay? I'm alright. It's just a little startled, that's all. Oh, ow. Oh, goodness. Hold still for a minute. I wouldn't be surprised if you twisted your ankle. What? <laughs> Sorry. I just wanted to give Hina a big surprise. Let me take you to the clinic to have that checked out. Just in case. Oh, will you? Thank you. I hope Granny Yuki's gonna be okay. Me too. Come on, let's go with them. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Alright, let's continue Lucas's event. Oh, there it is. Fortunately, Yuki only has a slight sp a light sprain. It should heal quickly with no lasting effects. <sighs> However, the timing is extremely unfortunate. Exactly. Right when your performances were already under scrutiny. Ugh. I am deeply sorry. I never intended to harm others with my miracles. Your trick didn't direct... Your trick didn't directly cause Yuki's injury, so it's technically not your fault. But it was still irresponsible. Yeah. Not that any mortal can stop the fickle whims of a god. But for now, you're to refrain from performing any of your magic tricks. Oh, but Captain Livia. Lucas is just trying to make people happy. He only summoned that bird monster because... Julian asked him to. Whoa, did I just lose my voice? I agree with the field captain. No more shows, at least for the time being. Are you okay with that, Lucas? I have no objections. Lucas. Hmm. I think there's probably one more part to that, right? Yes, there is. I guess we'll see that tomorrow, then. <laughs> Actually, I had to keep checking when this next part was going to show up. Couldn't find it online anywhere, so I just had to, uh, just keep waiting around. Sure enough, there it is. Uh, I just have to get close to the hill, right? I don't have to find a way to climb up it. Okay, there we go. Because I don't think I can get up that normally. What are you doing, man? I'm not gonna sing, but... Tossed about by the waves, through towns small and cities vast, I wander near and far to the future from the past. Lucas is singing? To come and then to go, or to give and then demand, time will pass us by again as we live hand in hand. As always, I have no idea what he's talking about. Now I must bid you farewell, before we've even said hello. Leaving happiness in full bloom, petals falling as I go. Sure is a pretty melody. Joys of yesterday bathe tomorrow in rosy light. May their soft glow always guide you safely through the night. So warm and comforting. Bringing love and beauty to the world. <sighs> Hey, Lucas. Oh? Are you awake? How'd I end up here? Whoa! What the? <laughs> my legs feel like jelly. I can't stand up. This appears to be a side effect of my vocal performance. Huh? 
I'll have to add singing holy songs within hearing range of mortal ears to my list of taboos. Should a human listen too closely, such songs could cause their souls to leave their bodies and ascend to the heavens. Your voice can kill people? <sighs> I have to wonder if coming to this town was a mistake. I don't believe that. John, for what reason do you call Rigbarth home? Why do I live here? Uh... When I first showed up, I was totally lost. I couldn't remember a thing. But the people here made me feel welcome. Everyone went out of their way to help a complete stranger. Now I want to give back to them. They were kind to me, so I'm going to return that kindness however I can. A splendid sentiment. I can feel the purity of your wish. Yes. I believe I must have a similar reason. I enjoy making others happy. It's as simple as that. Say, Lucas... If that's how you feel, then why don't you just tell people? Tell them? An admirable suggestion, but I'm quite poor at expressing myself. I don't really agree with that, but if you say so... Hmm. I know. What if you sang for him? With a voice as powerful as yours, humming alone will let everyone know how you really feel. Then you wouldn't need to use any words. But I just added singing to my list of taboos. Then tone it down enough so that you won't send us to heaven. I'm sure you can handle that, right? I mean, you are a god. <laughs> In both word and deed, you dare a deity to prove himself. How bold you are, fearing neither the sacred nor the profane. I can do just as you wish. It will only take a bit of practice. Okay. While you're practicing, I'll go talk to Simone about it. We'll set up a proper stage for you, so everyone can come and hear your song. <laughs> you think of everything, John. Thank you for your kind assistance. All right. Oh, it is the next day now. Well, might as well just go do that. Well, it's a good thing I'd done everything I needed to last <laughs> yesterday. talk for a minute? Hmm? What is it, John? It's about Lucas. Oh, I see. He wants to sing. Yes. I know he's not allowed to do any more magic tricks, but no one said anything about performing a song. True, we haven't outlawed singing in town. Yet. Got it. Alright. I can tell you have a reason for this. Let me discuss it with Captain Livia and arrange for a proper venue. Thank you so much. Alright, I guess that'll be all for now, so... Man, this, this turned out to be a long event, huh? Alright. See you guys in a little bit. Well, concert time. this crowd. They're all here to listen to Lucas sing. Hmm. This turned out to be a bigger event than I expected. Well, of course we all came. How could we not, how could we not when we heard that Lucas would sing for us? How's your ankle, dearest? Doesn't hurt too much, does it? No need to push yourself. <laughs> it's fine, dear. My feet felt so light as I walked here that I didn't even notice a twinge of pain. Okay, let's get this started. But remember, if anything goes awry, the show's over. Very well. Understood. <clears throat> testing. One, two, three. One, two, three, testing. Hello, everyone. I'm Lucas. 
Due to the whims of fate, I have become a resident of your beautiful town. You've all shown me endless hospitality, and for that I am grateful. I wanted to give back to you by sharing my divine... <clears throat> my magic tricks. Over time, I learned that I quite enjoy entertaining you with my performances. However, in light of recent circumstances, I will no longer hold magic shows. Instead, I thought I might sing a song to entertain you today. And so if I could ask for your attention, please. Go on, Lucas. You can do it. On the warmest days of spring, in the coldest winter snow, let us sing in harmony as we... As from dusk to dawn we go. My, what a heavenly voice. Skies of blue above and fields of green below. Let's share in every joy that life can bestow. Hmm? What's this? I feel like I'm on the verge of tears. How about well, that? Well, I don't know how, what else to call this feeling but joy, pure and simple. As the light of yesterday brings us hope for tomorrow, Let's take each other's loving hands and go without sorrow. Wishing for eternity. Two hearts, a vow, you and me. Thank you for listening. No reaction? Uh-oh, did his song make it through them? Whoa! Yay, yay, yay! Jeepers! I'm so happy I'm actually shaking! Lucas, that was a wonderful song! <sighs> your magic trick was... Your magic tricks were great! This blows them right out of the water! Bravo! No wonder the children were so fond of his performances. Heinz? Would you look at that? that wasn't just a song. Lucas was bearing his soul to us. I'd believe it. They really get it. Julian? Hey, um, everyone? It was me. It's my fault Granny Yuki got hurt. I was the one who asked Mr. Lucas to make a little bird monster pop out. I thought a funny surprise would make Hina laugh. I didn't think it'd scare anyone. Sorry. I'm sorry, Granny Yuki. Sorry, Mr. Lucas. Mr. Lucas didn't do anything wrong at all. Please let him do magic tricks for us again. Julian? Oh, darling, I was never mad about it in the first place. You didn't do anything wrong. And neither did Lucas. All he wanted was to get a smile out of us. Excuse me. Simone, I'd like to make a request. Please let him perform again. He only wants to bring a little joy into our lives. This is true. All right. Though I still want you to wrap up your performances before the hour grows late. Awesome! Julian! From now on, I want you to speak up and tell the truth right away. No holding your tongue until days later. Understood? Yeah, okay. Lucas, I apologize for doubting your good intentions. <laughs> I think I'll come watch one of your magic shows sometime, if you don't mind. Not at all. Oh, glad everything worked out. There, see? You expect your feelings and everyone understood them. Yes, because of your kind assistance. Thank you, John. That's what I'm here for. Besides, I want to see more of your magic tricks. I mean, divine powers as much as anyone else. Is that so? Well then. One, two, three. A little miracle just for you. <laughs> Thank you. Aww.
Oh, we have the second. Let me do the second part of Beatrice's, because that that'll get us onto everyone's third. I think I'll start with Priscilla's third one. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, Beatrice. How do you do? How do you do, John? Looks like you're finally getting used to life in Rigbarth. Indeed. And I have you to thank for it. I've even made some other friends around my age. I'm really happy to hear that. And for the first time in my life, I'm free to enjoy some time to myself. This town truly does feel like home, as though I've known it for a long time. I shall find it very difficult to leave all this behind. Then why not just stay? I'm sure we'd all love it if you stuck around. That is sadly out of the question. There are people in the palace awaiting my return. People who need me. I see. She's gonna have to go back to the capital someday. I fear that I've grown a bit too accustomed to the small town life. I must complete my task as soon as possible. At any rate, I ought to be going now. But I wonder, when I return to the capital, how would you like to become my knight? Excuse me? My star! Sir John, Royal Knight of Norad. It has a lovely ring to it, don't you think? <laughs> huh? Uh, Beatrice, I just barely got used to being a ranger. Knighthood seems a little out of my league. I think maybe on my next playthrough I want to marry- I was going between either Beatrice or Priscilla for my next playthrough. I think I want to go Beatrice. Definitely dealing with Mela on this one, though. Uh, speaking of Be uh, speaking of Priscilla... Priscilla's third event. Hey guys, what's everyone up to? Hi, John. Hey! You can be the prince, okay? Oh, hold it. I get to be the prince. Um... Oh, uh, what? Sorry, I'm confused. We were just discussing a little skit that Priscilla wrote. Now we're assigning the roles. Okay, and you want me to play the prince? Precisely. Princes are kind and gentle and strong, and they care a whole lot about their people. And then? The prince all rescues all the princesses after they get kidnapped, and then picks one to marry at the end. <laughs> I think you'd make the perfect prince, John. Right, Priscilla? Y yeah. Um... I, um... I think it'd be nice if John were the prince. <sighs> That's what Priscilla wants. I guess I can settle for being prince number two. Nope. Julian, you get to be a princess. What? Ah, oh, seriously? But I wanted you to be the princess, and I'd be the prince, and... C come now, Julian. Let's practice sharing and let John be the prince. Just for today, alright? <laughs> Not that I've agreed to do it yet. <laughs> Fine. If you even can be a good prince. <laughs> I shall fulfill my princely duties. Yay, long live Prince John. Okay, your highness. We're all going to go get kidnapped. Once you've finished counting, come rescue us. Yay! Oh, I'm being kidnapped. Help! <sighs> uh, okay, okay, I'm going. <sighs> prince John, huh? Looks like I've been given a big role. <laughs> Alright. Looks like we're fine, everyone. Oh, I can't even check the map for this. Alright, well, we got someone in the ruins. Prince John, so you've arrived. Yikes, Reinhardt looks like he doesn't want to do this. Um, I've come to rescue Princess Beatrice. I refuse. I want to let some nameless riffraff of uncertain character spirit away her highness. Actually, I think she's supposed to be playing the part of the riffraff. On guard! Jesus, dude. Whoa, hey! Wait a sec. Uh, Reinhardt, you do know this is just a game, right? 
Ah, right. I beg your pardon. That did it didn't even fucking occur to him. This is a game. Jesus, dude. Force of habit. <laughs> Damn, man. Okay, here I come. Prepare yourself. I am defeated. Princess Beatrice, I have come to rescue you. Why, thank you. How very kind. For a moment, you seemed so much like a real prince that my heart skipped a beat. Oh, whoops. That line it wasn't in Priscilla's script. My apologies. Well, then. Anyway, I'm off to the Great Tree Plaza. Please meet me there once you've rescued everyone else. <laughs> Poor Reinhardt being roped into this. Alright. Still gotta find some more princesses, I guess. <laughs> Oh, this is a cute one. I, I I like this event. Let's see. Probably up in town. Oh, there's one in the clinic. Gee, I, I wonder who that could be. That's probably Priscilla. <laughs> Lucy guarding her. <laughs> Willing to bet. Oh, no, it's Simone and Julian. Huh, well. Man, I wanted to be the prince. What is it, Julian? Don't you like being a princess? Why would I? First of all, I'm a boy. Oh, I see. So if you weren't a boy, you wouldn't mind the role? Yeah? What's that supposed to mean? See, I've been experimenting with a magical el elixir that will let princes turn into princesses. This seems like a good opportunity to try it out. How about I test it on you? Then you won't have any reason to complain about playing your part, will you? <laughs> <laughs> y you're kidding, right? <laughs> what? Oh crap, she's serious! Mom, no, don't! Yeah, I think you're going a little too far there, Simone. See, Julian's freaking out. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little carried away. Come now, Julian, don't be so upset. You know I would never use my favorite son as a test subject. Yeah, right. That look in your eye was totally serious. Jeez. I'm going to the plaza. John, you better show up there after you rescue everybody else, okay? <laughs> oh my. Looks like I completely terrified him. Yeah, gee, I wonder why. Well, yeah, your performance is a little too intense. If you have to be the villain, isn't it more entertaining to commit to the role? I suggest you throw yourself into, the, into your own role, dear prince. Choose your princess carefully. Alright, so this one's probably, uh, Murakumo and Hina. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Uh, I'm surprised you found us so quickly, Prince John. <laughs> Looks like he's in on the game. Better play my part, then. Release Princess Hina, you cad! <laughs> if you want the princess, come and get her yourself! Wow, Murakumo's really getting into it. Ah, save me, your highness. Save me. Okay, here I come. Yeah! Yeah, you got me! Thanks. Thank you so much, Prince John. You're my hero. I'll go wait in the plaza, so hurry and rescue everybody else, okay? <laughs> when she was smaller, she'd tell me I was her hero. <laughs> oh, poor guy. He's crying? <laughs> oh, poor Murakumo. Oh, man. <laughs> now I feel kind of bad. I wonder if this is Riker then. Can't imagine who else would be in the studio. Well, actually, would Riker even be playing along with us? Oh, no, Palma. 
Ah, uh, Prince, help me. Hold, you detestable do-gooder! Today you have finally met your match! Palma, what's wrong? You suddenly froze up. <laughs> Dust my eyes deceive me! It's you! My precious son who was lost to me that day our poor villagers raised to the ground by bandits! Oh, how fickle the whims of fate! That we would ever meet again is pure destiny! <laughs> um, Palma, that line's not in the script. This is an improv here. <laughs> oh, it's not? Ah. Well then, let's try that again from the top. Noble Prince, if you want me re to return the princess to you, then shout your love to the world. Let rip your throat words from such deep passion that they leave me completely and utterly defeated. Huh? Huh? Well, that's not... Don't hold back. Let your soul scream of love, of passion. Let me hear it all. Priscilla doesn't say anything about the script this time. I guess that means she wants me to roll with it. Oh well, better play along. Priscilla, I love you. <laughs> yes, true love needs no decoration. Keep it simple and sincere. Your words have resonated in every corner of my heart. Alright, you win. I will return the princess to you. May the two of you find happiness forevermore. Uh, princess. I'm glad you're safe. Yeah, um, thank you, Prince. Um... Well then, I guess I'll head back to the plaza. Meet me there once you've, uh, rescued everyone. <laughs> this is a really cute event really does make me want to go for Priscilla at my next playthrough. Hey, John's back! Now that all are present, let us ask the prince to choose a princess to wed. The chosen princess will receive a kiss on the cheek. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, count me out. Pick one of the other three. Um... Okay, then. It's Priscilla's event, it's only fair. Um, you're really choosing me? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I'm glad. Okay. Ready, Priscilla? Um, yeah. And so the prince and princess were wedded in a beautiful ceremony and spent the rest of their days in blissful harmony. The end. Priscilla, you're bright red. Y you be quiet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you better watch out for that prince of yours. <laughs> right now I'm blushing too. That was very cute. I'm surprised that one's actually finished already. Alright. Oh, I forgot. You know, I'm always going to keep forgetting about Martin since his starts at noon, so I, I, I'm going to start his now. Actually, no, not noon. Why does his just not start some fucking days, then? Maybe it starts at 9, compared to everyone else's. I don't fucking know. Well, we only have the final heart events left for a few people now, so... That's good. Uh, hold on. Enough of this! I'm leaving! Hmm, I wonder what that's about. Huh? What just happened? That person looked really, really mad. <sighs> Guess I misheard him one too many times and he ran out of patience. Making a customer so mad that they stormed out. I'm ashamed of myself. Don't blame yourself, Master Derek. 
You were busy concentrating on a last minute rush order when he walked in. Oh. Huh? What's this about consecrating a last minute rush order in his hog end? Oh, I think I see why he's upset now. Oh, heck. What, did I mishear you again? Sorry. This way I'm gonna wind up driving everyone driving away everybody but our regulars. Martin, couldn't you handle the customer service side of things instead? Right. We tried that. But I've been told my attempt at a polite smile is, and I quote, frightening. <laughs> Everyone ran away. Yet when I tried to interact with the customers normally, they thought I was upset with them for some reason. <laughs> and they all ran away. Again. Yeah, it sounds like you have a serious problem here. I'm thinking we should hire some extra help. None of us are cut out for this customer service stuff, that's for sure. Good idea, Master. I'll ask around town. Well, now... Yo, bask around town? No, I misheard you yet again, didn't I? Yes. Correct, sir. That's not even close to what I said. <laughs> oh, Hello boy. There. Yeah, you guys got your, uh, fucking work cut out for you, that's for sure. Alright, then. Okay, Martin, part two. What are they doing with their customer service? Probably haven't found anything good. Oh, Priscilla? Welcome! Hi, welcome to Dark Smithy. Right. I'd like a battle axe. Yes, sir. A battle axe. They're, uh... Huh, right here. <sighs> I'm afraid you're going to topple over trying to carry that. True. Yeah, you need some muscle to handle our merchandise. Might be a bit much to ask of you, Priscilla. Yeah. If you're looking for someone with muscle, I'm your guy. Hey, welcome. Welcome. Come on in, folks. Got the finest, freshest weaponry in all of Rig Bars. Excuse me. I'd like a look at a desert wind, please. Hmm? Desert? Dessert? If you're looking for sweets, you got the wrong shop, buddy. Desert wind's the name of a weapon. Hmm. Even if you can hear the name correctly, it doesn't help you if you don't actually know what that item is. Hmm. Huh. This is harder than I thought. Yes! Ooh, me next! Me next! Welcome! Welcome to Dark Smithy. We're full of mystery and weaponry. Show me your staves. Whoa. Staves? That was blunt. Those are blunt weapons. I sense a crime in the making. Cecil. Next! <laughs> Honestly. Jeez, you guys are so bad at this. Here, let me show you how it's done. Hi there. Welcome to Derek Smithy. Excuse me. I'd like an iron shield. For real? What, seriously? Mister, you aren't gonna win any battles if you only focus on defense. Trust me, what you're looking for is offense. Like, say, this steel sword here. <clears throat> Don't be pushy. Salesperson should show the customer what they asked for and nothing more. What? What's even the point of having a salesperson? It's all about recommending the best product for the customer. No. Lucy does have a point. See? But in our case, that's only true if your eye is sharp enough to recommend him the perfect weapon or set of armor. Even I don't get it right every time. Don't worry, I've got you covered. See, I have eyes like a weagle. <sighs> Master Derek can't do that even with all his years of experience. Then I doubt you could only after a few hours. Really? I don't know. I can read the fine print on signs from like a zillion paces away. Enough. Thank you all for coming, but I'm afraid that none of you can do the job. Boo. Working for a smithy is even more complicated than I imagined. I see, and don't, don't Lucy and Priscilla already have part-time jobs anyway? <laughs> Alright, then I, I guess we'll see what happens next. All right, let's see if any progress has been made on the uh, customer service front yet for the smithy. I doubt. Oh, we're just back where we started? No, I said I wanted a battle axe, not object X. Oh. You want to relax? Uh, sorry, we don't carry tea leaves. Pardon me, you said a battle axe, correct? Oh, please wait one moment. Here you go. Our master blacksmith put his heart and soul into making this excellent weapon. Huh. Well, it does look solid, I'll give you that. Alright, I'll take it. Oh, wait, uh, while I'm here... Could you recommend a set of armor that might suit me? A suitable set of armor? 
Uh, well... True. Given the way he carries himself, he seems to know how to handle a weapon. But he ain't got much brawn. If he's gonna be swinging around a heavy battle axe, he doesn't need heavy armor. I'd recommend a wind cloak. It's light and helps you move quickly. Considering the way of that battle axe, you should invest in light armor. I'd suggest a wind cloak. Oh, wind cloak, hmm? I hadn't thought of that. Okay, then I'll take one of those as well. Thank you very much. Thanks. I owe you one, John. No, no, I would have been completely lost if you hadn't helped me there at the end. Master Derek. I just walked by so someone saying he'd made a great purchase. Looked like a customer of ours. Excellently done, Master. No, it wasn't me. John did all the customer service stuff. What? Really? But it's mighty impressive. How about it, John? Wanna work for us? <laughs> you flatter me. I didn't do that much. It's just basic customer service. <sighs> but even the basic part is hard for us. Hmm. Hey, John, I'd like to ask you a favor. What is it? Could you write down everything you did and then teach me what to do? That's... Ah, uh, I gotcha. You wanna make a manual? Yes. Exactly. I think I could manage customer service if I just had instructions. Now there's an idea. Yeah, I'd appreciate it if you did that for us, John. Okay, sure. If you think it'll help. It will. Definitely. Though I'm sure it'll take us some time to put it together. Let me know when you have an evening to spare. Alright. Well, yeah, you know, we could just fucking do it now. What's well, just gonna take me the rest of the day? Do you have some time to work on the customer service manual? Oh, this is totally gonna take the rest of the day? Ah. Uh, eh, why not? I wasn't doing anything today anyway. <laughs> Good. Then come with me. What, to what do? should I do when the customer is looking at the shelves? Good question. Well,. It depends on the person, but I'd suggest not bugging them too much if they're actively browsing. Once they start glancing in your direction, go over to them and say something like, How can I help you? Or, Is there anything you need? If you, if you act casual about it, you should put the customer at ease. Then they'll let you know what they want. I see. Good to know. Good to know, uh, good to know that I don't need to force myself to talk to them the whole time. I'll make a note of that. Hey now. It's the middle of the night, you two. Martin, don't keep poor John up so late. Sorry about that. It's that late? Sorry, I guess I fell into my old work habits. No, it's okay. We've already made so much progress. Let's just finish the whole thing tonight. You know, you're a good person. Huh? No. Uh, nothing. Let's get back to work. Don't push yourselves too hard, you hear? Alright. It's done. We did it! With the manual this detailed, I can handle even the toughest customer. Thanks. Thanks, John. I know I kept you here for ages, so please feel free to take today off and rest. What about you? I'm going back to work. <laughs> I figured as much. 5 a.m. Man. I wonder, let me see something, even though it's only an hour before the time we're supposed to wake up. I do wonder, if I go to sleep, will that actually, uh, wake me up at 6? Or will it just advance towards the next day? Is it 20th, right? Yeah. Alright, cool. I was still able to get some sleep. Alright, uh, I guess I'll come back when I find another event. Alright, looks like there's still one more part to this at least. So I guess we'll go check in on Martin and see how he's doing.
shouldn't have many more of these left to do. Thanks. Thank you for your purchase. And thank you for the help. This cooking knife looks like it'll do just the trick. Now I can make even tastier meals for my partner and kids. Looks like everything's going well so far. <laughs> Thanks to your help, yeah. Ah, that look. It's the same face he made while looking at his tools. If you always had that gentle expression on your face, you wouldn't even need a manual to handle customer service. Right. If I could look like this for anyone at any time, I wouldn't have needed a manual in the first place. Good point. Guess that means he feels comfortable around me? Thanks. Huh? Why are you thanking me? I should be the one thanking you. <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> you really are an odd one. Alright, so we got another one. Alright, oh, I forgot about Reinhard, too. Uh, I think we'll do Cecil's next. Alright. So yeah, let's head over and do uh, Cecil's event now. Yeah, we only have uh, Cecil, Beatrice, Lucy, and Reinhard left. Now we're all good on uh, the romance event. You know, I'm, I'm prob I'm, I might end up splitting this into like two episodes, depending on how long each this whole thing ends up being. Because I'm really not keeping track of how long it is so far. But hey, we'll see. Palmo! What's wrong? Yeah, what's up, Cecil? Oh! Oh, God! Holy shit, Palmo, are you okay? Whoa-ho-ho! -ho. Now this is a novel turn of events! Yes, indeed! A monumental miracle of ingenuity brought on by the whims of happenstance! Are, are you in pain? The fates have spoken. I have become one with my art. No. I. Am. Art! What is he going on about this time? A stack of building materials tumbled, o tumbled over and Palmo got wedged between them. Now he's stuck. Oh no, we have to get him out of there! Alright, let's get to it. It's a strong arm you need. I'm your man. Ready, Martin? Yes. Yes, sir. Oh, you're going to lift the materials off him? Let me help. Cecil, stand back. This is dangerous. Martin, why do you always treat me like I'm still a kid? Cecil, a grown man doesn't whine and complain. Not you too, Derek. I don't want to be the only one standing around twiddling my thumbs at a time like this. Whoa! Ah! See? That's why I told you to stand back. Ugh. It just surprised me, that's all. Cecil, well, let's leave the heavy lifting to them for now. If they get stuck, then who's gonna help them? Okay? Hmm. Fine. Alright, Martin. You take that end. Riker, that one. Roger. On three. Ready? One, two, three! Free at last! Ah, the crisp air of liberty never tasted so sweet. Gentlemen, my most, gr my greatest and most gracious gratitude for your grand efforts. Palmo, can I see your hand? Hmm? Aha, I thought so. You got a scrape on the back of your palm. God zooks! A surprise scrape? It entirely escaped my attention. I I have a bandage on me to cover it for now. But you really should go see Simone straight away. Wow, even Palma himself didn't notice that scrape. 
Those are some incredible observation skills, Cecil. Thanks, I guess. Hmm? Oh, Cecil's feeling inadequate. Poor guy. All right. So wait till tomorrow to see how that continues. Hey, turns out the second part's all ready to go right now. <laughs> Oops. Maybe I should have looked around the map first. That might have been a good thing for me to do. Hey! Hey, John. Do you think I'm unreliable? Why do you ask that? I just wanted to help my brother save Paul, though, but... Ah, he's still feeling bitter about what happened earlier. Everyone insists on treating me like an overgrown child. Especially Martin. I'm sure it's because they all care about you and want you to stay safe. And that's why they coddle me like a kid. I want to be strong and independent. Someone people go to for help. Not somebody they worry and fuss over. You're strong, John. Everybody knows they can rely on you. How can I be more like you? Please, teach me your ways. When you put it that way, I guess I have built up a certain level of trust with everyone in town. No idea how it happened. Tell me whatever little detail comes to mind. I need any clue that I can get. Hmm. If you're all out of clues, that usually means it's time for an investigation. Try talking to your neighbors. Rebarth has plenty of other strong people. You can investigate their secret to their str uh, the secret to their strength. Ooh, that's a great idea! Detective work like this is right up my alley. Okay, let's open the case and get cracking. Going. Oh, and I wound up in the kitchen. Probably going to see Murakumo first. Okay, just gone up and over that bridge now that I'm thinking about it. Oh well. No, I always wanted a chance to settle things between us once and for all. <laughs> now ain't that a coincidence? I was thinking the same thing. Settle things? What the hell happened between you two? Uh, what are they doing? Murakumo and Derek are having an arm wrestling contest. And I'm investigating the secret to their strength. See, when I started thinking about strength, these two immediately jumped to mind. Uh, to mind. So I came to the inn to talk to Murakumo, and it just so happened that Master Derek was finishing up his bath. We got to talking, and before I knew it, they turned it into a big contest to see who's got the stronger arm. Muscle power, huh? Ooh, why am I? Ugh, I'm not yelling already. Uh, muscle power, huh? Yeah, you can use that to measure. You can measure that kind of strength pretty easily. You ready? You bet. No take backs. Got it. Wonder who's going to win? You can cut the tension with a knife. Gentlemen, I couldn't help but over here. In comes a third party a third challenger, I suppose. Uh oh. They're they're both sweating. Zamir Randolph is the strongest. Would either of you mind if I joined in? Sure, I don't have a problem with that. But it's your funeral. If you get hurt, that's on you, not us. I don't mind either. I've heard plenty of stories about your adventuring days. This is arm wrestling. Won't, won't your size put you at a disadvantage? Oh, I'll manage. I'd be honored if you considered me a worthy opponent. Randolph actually sounds serious about this. Is he going to be okay? Let's just make sure we're ready to call Simone the instant it seems like things are going south. Yep. Yeah, good idea. Alrighty then, Randolph. You can face me first. Fine by me. Gentlemen, 
Take your stances. Ready? Fight! Huh. Roll! Whoa! Randolph, that was amazing! You beat Murakumo in two seconds flat! Yeah, it looked like you used some kind of special technique. Welp, I'm up next. I'm ready when you are. Okay, take your stances. Ready? Fight! Damn, Randolph. Yeah. Flawless victory. Whew, well, color me surprised. You ain't lost your edge one bit. Perhaps I still have what it takes to be an adventurer again. Wow, Randolph's the definition of big things in a small package. You said it. He took down the two beefiest men in Rigbarth like it was nothing, even though he's half their size. I guess there's more strength in bulking up. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. Strength in relation to muscle mass and physical size. I think Cecil could probably learn a lot from, uh, from Randolph. So going to see Reinhard next. I wonder if, if uh, Cecil's third event here is just all going to take place over the course of one day. I mean, if so, that means I could just start one of the other remaining ones immediately. I think I'll go to Reinhardt's next. We've had that one unlocked for a while. I haven't done it yet. Oh, Martin and Scarlet are here, too. Cecil, what are you... I'm in the middle of a stakeout. I need to hear what they're saying. We're just having a normal conversation. Cecil was eavesdropping. Ha! <laughs> That's what I wanted you to think. You know what they say. If you want to fool your enemies, start by fooling your allies. Uh-huh. So, who's the one getting fooled? Martin, can we get back to the topic at hand? Right. Ah, right. You're asking about my commitments. In my case, I'm mostly committed to, I'm most committed to the art of smithing. Working as a blacksmith requires you to do far more than simply hammer metal all day. Go on, go on. I devoted myself to learning various metalworking techniques, but I also pay attention to the condition of my tools and the quality of my materials. Each day I commit myself to learning as much as I can about every single facet of smithing, down to the smallest detail. I see. While at first glance it seems like a straightforward test of strength, smithing actually demands a great deal of care and research. That strong sense of purpose helps you make con constant improvements. I'm sure the ores of the world would be honored if a man like you worked with them. No. Compared to Master Derek, I, found my I find myself lacking in just about every way. I must dedicate myself even more to my trade. I want nothing more than to master the craft. Years ago, I swore I'd devote my life to my work, and that's what I intend to do. One day, one day I'll have learned enough to shake hands with Master Derek, partner to partner. And then someday, I'll surpass him. Okay, Martin. Uh, sorry. Got a little carried away. Yeah, you're a completely different person when you're talking shop. You're just that passionate about your craft. Yes, I could sense the strength of your conviction. An admirable spirit indeed. I salute you, sir. Just hurry up and ask the next person already. Okay, um, Reinhardt, you're next. Hmm, let me see. Personally, I'm committed to discover... I'm committed to discovering the best method of refluffing a pillow once it's gone flat. What? Huh? Huh? I also put serious effort into finding the gentlest way to clean the laundry. 
Excessively rough washing will quickly wear out all coloring, wear out color and cloth. Sometimes I collect junk other people have thrown away and repair it as best as I can. It's startling how much life you can still find in discarded trash. That's a very, um, environmentally conscious commitment. Thank you, Scarlet. I knew you would understand. I even challenged myself when I could, when I cook. I try to use every bit of peel and rind. Waste not, want not. That's what I say. Reinhard, you, you don't... Bro, I know you can't taste shit, but like... My man. Don't do that. When I do manage to use every last scrap, I feel an incredible sense of accomplishment. I can barely resist pumping my fist in the air. Wow, not what I expected to hear from a knight. Were those chores originally a hobby of yours or something? <laughs> they're, en they're an enjoyable part of my daily routine, but I wouldn't call them hobbies. I have but one desire that drives me. In a situation where true luxury is not an option, I am committed to providing Lady, Lady Beatrice with, with as much comfort as I possibly can. Nothing more, nothing less. Oh, I gotcha. Even your commitments show the depth of your loyalty and conviction. I'm impressed that none of, it, none of it feels like a burdensome obligation to you. You simply enjoy doing your chores like any other pastime. That struck a chord with me as well. Next time you have a free afternoon, how about you join me in recycling some empty cans? I like that idea. Let's see how many different ways we can repurpose them. Sounds like a plan. The way this conversation is going, I assume you also have some unique commitments, Scarlet. Hmm. Well, I'm not certain whether or not this qualifies, but I think things need to have a clearly defined beginning and end. Otherwise, I feel painfully uncomfortable. Got any examples? For instance, when I sit down to have a meal, I will not get back up until I have finished eating. If someone speaks in a meandering fashion with no clear point or purpose, it leaves me frustrated and confused. And once I start piecing together a jigsaw puzzle, I simply can't stop until I've completed it, no matter how many pieces it may have. I'm embarrassed to admit that I reported for duty one morning without, slink without, sleep without sleeping a wink the night before, all because of a puzzle. How's that embarrassing? I think it's amazing that you have the grit and determination to see everything through to the end. No. No, it's not something worthy of praise. Appending my daily schedule for a frivolous activity was unacceptable. Aha! So you're committed to your daily routine. Rangers have a duty to keep everyone safe. If I fell asleep on the job, it, I would fail my community and myself. I need to stay in peak condition at all times, ready to respond to any emergency. She's a pro. I could learn from your level of dedication. Yet I still gave in to the seductive allure of that a thousand piece puzzle. I deserve no praise for that. After thinking over my transgression, I gave myself a new rule. No matter how tempting, I won't touch any puzzle that has a thousand pieces or more. Unless it's my day off. You gave yourself new commitments in order to uphold your existing commitments. I always knew you were strict, Scarlet, but I didn't realize you'd be the strictest with yourself. Have you considered improving your puzzle completion skills? Say, practice until you can finish a thousand piece puzzle in three hours or less. Ooh, that's an idea! Then you wouldn't have to worry about staying up late on a work night. Yeah, but wouldn't that tempt you to start even harder puzzles? Um, I'm definitely concerned about that. Now that you mention it, I'd probably do the exact same thing. As would I. Interesting. Conclusion. Everyone here enjoys challenging themselves with difficult tasks. Now we just go back to the seed outpost. I'm just gonna talk to Captain Livia.
You guys sure look like you're having fun. Ah, John. We're having a nice time exchanging stories. In other words, gossiping. Don't underestimate the rumor mill. You can find some very important clues in seemingly idle chatter. Hold it right there! Did I just hear you say clues? Boy, someone's ears are sharp. Ah, you're here too, Mr. Terry? No fair collecting clues all on your own. Let me help. How's it not fair? This kid. Now, now. John just arrived as well. What say we let them both... <clears throat> what say we let them both in on our little discussion? The more the merrier. Yeah, we had good timing, Cecil. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. I just mentioned hearing a little story about a living doll. It even talks. Well, it did talk, perhaps. Some people say it has since passed away. A talking doll? That has to be a ghost. I once told, heard an old story about a sign that could talk. Hmm? Was it a running sign? I can't remember anymore. I remember that story, Terry. That was a fun little si <laughs> a little uh, event day in Rune Factory 4. Either way, that's also gotta be a ghost. Was a ghost. Wow, a running, talking sign? What else have you heard, Mr. Terry? Hmm. Well, I heard something interesting from a traveler who passed through town not too long ago. They said they were friends with someone who'd woken up from a slumber that lasted several centuries. Wow! Hey, I got some awesome stories, too. You can't beat me that easily. Like, uh, like, oh yeah, I heard from somewhere that there's a clan of people who only eat flowers. Uh, are you, are you sure you aren't exaggerating? Sure, I'm sure. Even if I was, it'd only be a teeny tiny little bit. <laughs> I see. Lucy tends to exaggerate. Duly noted. I do not. We were just saying that truth sometimes sounds stranger than fiction. <laughs> Indeed. Let me say this. Whether you choose to believe it or not is all up to you. In this vast world of ours, no matter how strange it may seem at first, anything can happen. You've got that right. I've seen more than a few peculiar sights in my time. Why, a strange twist of fate brought Randolph and me together. Personally, I'd like to meet that person who woke up after sleeping for so long. Then I could clear up all kinds of ancient mysteries. It'd be neat if you could do that someday. Yeah. It sure would. Oh, and then back over at the Great Tree Plaza. I'm surprised this one just seems to take course over the span of a single day. I'm used to these just being one part per day. That's why I'm almost through summer already. Now, there's a group of people you don't see together every day. What are they up to? Not a clue. I've been watching them for a while now. <clears throat> I've been watching them for a while now. Huh? I thought it was strange to see the four of them together, so I decided to observe them for a bit. There's no real rhyme or reason to what they're doing. They don't seem to have any sort of grand purpose in mind. Uh-huh. There, see Palmo? He's starting to sketch something. Marvelous Muse, here comes a wave of inspiration. A waterfall of wondrous ideas have poured into my brain. I see the design of the gods, a grand spiral staircase so large it winds around the great tree itself. Indeed, it spirals all the way up into the sky. My goodness, you better not let any, elder let any elderly folks travel up it. After all, they be climbing the stairway to heaven. Thank you, Heinz.
Um, I don't get it. I've learned lots of human words. Lots and lots. But I don't understand Heinz's words. Not at all. What, you understand humor? You poor thing. Here, let me break out one of my favorite routines for you. It's an oldie but a goodie. Do you hear that the general store is out of nuts? Really? Well, nuts to that. Well, I heard they actually tasted pretty bad. Oh, so they're nuts so good? Double nuts. Um, now I really don't understand. Ah, now my brain is all tired, my tummy is rumbly. I'm going home. <laughs> well, see ya, Fuka. What the hell is Lucas doing? Ah, oh, look. Now Lucas is up to something. Hmm. He's concentrating really hard. Huh. Oh, Palmo's pen. Hey, Dad! What manner of sorcery is this? The pen I was definitely holding in my hand has completely vanished. Oh, I see now. At last I understand. The heavens have spoken. Enough with the design doodles, they say. Hurry and give these ideas form. John, would you please check your pocket? No? Oh, yeah. Huh? Um... Whoa. Oh, hey, there's a pen. Oh, wait, is this? Yeah, that's Palmo's pen. Excellent. My accuracy at teleporting objects have certainly improved. This is just target practice? I must check my scheduled shipments. What materials are arriving when? I've got to know! Y your pen, Palmo. Ah! Uh, darn, Palmo left before I give him his pen back. Here, allow me to take responsibility and return it to him at a, at a later time. Okay, thanks. Interesting. Conclusion. Follow the beat of your own drum. Are we, are, are we seriously going to be taking advice from Elsha? Is, is that really such a good idea, Cecil? Or... Uh, why are you leaning up against the door like that? Shh! There's a secret meeting going on inside right now. Huh? Whoa, a secret meeting. Yeah, my investigator's intuition is screaming that this is no idle chatter. John, come over here. You should hear this too. Okay, let's both listen then. Oh. Hmm. I'm perfectly willing to do anything, of course. I would even give my own life. Oh, really? It's easy enough for you to say that. Too easy. Hm. Doesn't matter what you say. No one loves anyone more than I love Hina. I'm afraid I must disagree with that claim. In my case, I'd gladly drink poison for Lucy and Julian's sake. Allow me to prove it. Elsha, hand me that flask. No. Ah, uh, ah, uh, before we go any further, just know that I've got you both beat. For Priscilla and Fuka's sake, I wouldn't even hesitate. I would wake up early. Holy shit. I, I don't think you guys can beat that. Ish. Maybe. Never mind. <laughs> oh, they're just talking about how devoted they are to the people they love. Hmm. I'd say all three of them are clean. Clean how? <laughs> Guess what? Hey, John, look at all these notes. I managed to dig up a ton of info on the whole town. Yeah, you really did. Now I guess our next step is to go home, organize all the data, and then analyze the results. Yeah, what a swell idea. Alright, looks like it stopped there. So probably there's one more tomorrow for uh, for Cecil here. Then we go on to the next one. Alright. Alright, let's go see what conclusions Cecil has reached.
based on his findings from yesterday. Come on in, John. I was just reading over my results. But you know what? Aside from when I watched Murakumo, Derek, and Randolph, I don't think I learned too much about how to be strong. Their arm wrestling contest was really amazing. But if you think about it, everyone else had their own unique kind of strength. They did? Yeah, take me Sasagi, for example. She said she'd do anything to prove the strength of her love for her family. Oh yeah. When you look at it that way, Captain Livia's strength lies in her info-gathering techniques. Right. Martin, Reinhardt, and Scarlet all have strong commitments. Exactly. Even Heinz and the others have strong personalities. Right. Now you're getting it. Not to mention powerful egos. <laughs> strength isn't just about muscles, is it? Everyone is strong in their own way. And that means I have my own kind of strength. I just need to find out what. Yeah. Right. Thanks. Thanks, John. You really are something else. You never treat me like I'm still a kid. You take me seriously, like an adult. Not only that, you give me tips and clues to help me figure things out. Now I totally understand why the townspeople rely on you so much. You're so amazing. I really admire you. I'm not that amazing. Okay, maybe a little. John, I've made up my mind. I want to be just like you. Strong, reliable, trustworthy. I'm going to be the kind of person people can count on. Starting today. Well, go for it, Cecil. Alright, I said next you're going to do Reinhardt's, right? Let me head on over there. Get that started, at least. Yeah, well, on the last three events already. Slowly coming to a close. What's going on here? Look what I found. Pretty, huh? Wow, it is pretty. Sparkles when the light hits it just right. That's... Hmm, looks like some kind of ore. Polish polishing it might make it sparkle even more. Oh, I see. I see. Afuka, can I borrow that stone for a moment? Sure, here. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me for a moment. Just a bit, like so. And then over here... Wow, now it sparkles all over. Is that a cloth for polishing weapons? Uh, indeed, indeed it was. You have a keen eye, as any blacksmith should. Wow. You're the keen one here. You polish this stone to a beautiful sheen in no time at all. What a pity that you're not a blacksmith. You may even have more skill than me. No. It was simply a quick fix. Nothing more. I certainly don't have your discipline, Martin. What do you mean? I enjoy maintaining my arms and armor, but I seldom manage to lose myself in that process. You, on the other hand, give your undivided attention to your work. No matter how much potential I may have, I'll never match that level of focus. <laughs> have confidence in yourself. Yeah. Alright. Thank you. I love how sparkly it is. Fuka and Martin look so happy. Reinhardt really knows how to open up to others and give heartfelt compliments. Alright, this one's gonna take a little while, though. Okay. Alright, next part of Reinhardt's event. Won't you reconsider? Please! Forgive me, Cecil, but I cannot. 
don't know what this is about. What's going on? Oh, John, help me change Reinhardt's mind. Huh? So that he'll do what? That is... Cecil still... wants me to teach him how to fight. Still... A detective usually fights in a battle of wits. But how cool would it be to have brains and brawn? If anyone in town can help you get stronger, it's Reinhard. No. I'm not opposed to the idea of teaching you. I simply don't have the time to do it properly. I could hardly promise you a consistent training schedule. Oh, I see. Still, you needn't worry about knowing how to fight. I'm certain that you'll eventually become an investigator with both wisdom and strength. You think so? Despite your youth, you've exhibited an extraordinary drive to improve yourself. Don't overburden yourself by learning a skill you have no use for. When the time comes, I'm sure you'll pick up whatever abilities you need in no time at all. You really mean it? Indeed. Really. In fact, I guarantee it. <laughs> Thanks, Reinhard. What a relief. Looks like Cecil was satisfied with that response. Reinhard sure knows how to give positive reinforcement. Crystal Abra now. Let's head on over there. I'm glad I have this little shortcut and I can just slide down the hill. Oh, rain stopped. Well, not graphically, but. Weather-wise, it stopped. Huh? Heinz and Reinhard? That's not a duo you see every day. Yes. And... Tell me about it. I was just thinking about how few conversations I've had with this guy. Now where were we? Oh, right. I was asking this uptight and upright knight if whether he has any hobbies. No. No, not in particular. I have too many pressing obligations to engage in idle pastimes. Such stoicism. Very cool. You know, you and me aren't so different after all. The other day a customer called me cool and I told him I could balance an egg on my nose. But when they called my bluff, I got egg on my face. <laughs> Truth is, I was just lying to impress them. My nose grew so long it almost hit the ceiling. What? Say what? The good news is that I popped the supersized schnoz right off and turned it back into a back scratcher. Wanna try it? That sounds like it'd make me feel super itchy, so I'll pass. More importantly, don't you need to get back to work? Ooh. Oh yeah, suppose so. <laughs> I'm keeping the cutest little person in the world waiting. Smell you later. Hmm. Seems like chatting with Heinz took a lot out of you. Indeed. I have little experience conversing with someone as jovial as him, although he seems likable enough. You, on the other hand, are quite adept at keeping up with Heinz. How should I approach a man of such abundant humor? <sighs> well, Heinz loves a good back and forth. Instead of shutting down a conversation with no, try responding with yes and... Building off of his setup to continue the exchange, no matter how ludicrous the premise. Oh, I see. Looks like he's giving this some serious thought. Oh, we got another one. Surprised by how quick some of these other events are going. In some carriages, it takes, like, forever to get these over with. And there it was. The biggest, shiniest crystal I'd ever laid my eyes on. Sounds, inter sounds interesting. Mind if I listen in? John, lend me your ears. I'm regaling him with the tale of that time I found the most lustrous stone I've ever spotted. Now, as I was saying, this gem was so massive that I couldn't have carried it if I tried. That's amazing. That must have been one amazing gem. 
<laughs> Pshaw, it was so amazing it brought a tear to my eye. Anyone fortunate enough to bring home such a treasure would be rolling in gold. And so I told the person who dug it up how lucky they were, then wept all the way back home. Ain't that a tearjerker? Ah, no, see. that's not... Wait, pardon me, Heinz. <clears throat> yes, and that must be why they say, finders keepers, losers weepers. <laughs> you beat me to my own punchline. You're as sharp as a tack now. <laughs> Yes, because you spin the most side-splitting yarns in town. You flatter me, lad. I'd best start working on some new material. <laughs> hey, look at that. You're already bantering with Heinz like a pro. Thanks to your helpful advice, I came to realize what Heinz wanted out of, out of our conversations. Now, now, that was the result of your own hard work. That qualified as work? Yes. Yeah, after all, don't you always take into account what the other person wants to hear? You listen closely to people's words and carefully consider their feelings. That doesn't come naturally. It takes practice. Well, actually... No, never mind. Please, excuse me. Hmm. Huh? Uh, Reinhardt? I don't think I said anything particularly earth-shattering. Maybe this will be the end of this one. I have a special favor to ask of you. Okay, what is it? I'd like you to amend your assessment, that I work hard to say what other people want to hear. Or rather, your appraisal of me was accurate. I only ask that you not speak of it to others. That's fine, but why? Isn't having that sort of skill a good thing? If people know that I, chose my, that I choose my words based on what they want to hear, they might consider me disingenuous, or even suspicious. Given my position as a knight and Lady Beatrice's guardian, I cannot afford to appear untrustworthy. I feel like you're exaggerating somewhat. I only wish to avoid en making any enemies here in Rigbarth. I implore you to do as I ask. Alright, I understand. I'll keep your secret. I promise. I'm glad to hear it. You have my gratitude. This is a first for me. Other than Lady Beatrice, th who has known me for years, no one's ever caught on to my caught on to my style of interpersonal communication before. Yet you saw through me almost immediately, unmotivated by deceit or malice. Uh... Well, it's obvious not it's obvious enough to me that you're just trying to do your best. Isn't that right, Reinhard? It's perfectly normal to recognize someone's hard work and compliment them for it. Yes, I suppose so. It's not as if I have an ulterior motive. I simply intuit what people want to hear, then open, up, then open up their hearts. I only act in good faith. John, you seem like a rare sort of silver-tongued individual. I'm not really sure how to feel about that. <laughs> With a man as canny as you around here, as you here, I can rest easy, knowing that Beatri Lady Beatrice will be safe even in my absence. Thank you for your trust and friendship. Um, I'm still not sure what he's getting at. No, oh, well, I'm just glad he trusts me. Alright. So that should just mean we got two events left. One with Lucy, one with Beatrice. Oh, actually, we might have one with Riker too, I think, right? No, just these two. At least I think so. Because I don't think I did Riker's other one. Unless his appears like late at night or something. I'll have to keep an eye out for that, because I'm fairly certain we never did Riker's third. But I'll do these ones first since, you know, they're popping up.
Hey, what's up? You look pretty excited. You bet. See, see, Dad's been off on a trip for ages, and he finally sent us a letter and presents. Check it out. It's a hand mirror just for me. Look on the back. See all the dents and divots? Probably used to be gems and stuff in there. Centuries of neglect had left it all dusty and worn, so it's got a real rustic feel. If I look at it closely enough, like really close, it reminds me of Dad. <clears throat> and that makes me miss him. A lot. <clears throat> Lucy. Huh? Oh, wait, what did I say that for? Uh, that's not what I meant. I wanted to say that it really makes me feel the weight of the history behind it. History, huh? Mm -hmm. As you can see, it's quite the antique. My husband found it while excavating the tomb of an ancient king. He dug up several of them, so he picked one to send to Lucy as a gift. Huh? He's digging up an old tomb? Just, what is his job? Dad's an archaeologist. He's actually pretty famous in those circles. Wow, really? Neat. Not particularly. He's a flighty, absent-minded lout who flits across the world from site to site and barely ever remembers to visit his family at home. Come on, Mom, you know you love him. Anyway, what am I still doing here? I've got to show this off to Priscilla and everyone else in town. See you, John. <sighs> Sheesh, she is as flighty as her father today. She's been like that all morning. Probably because of the mirror. I know she's always been full of energy, but this is unusual even for her. Childish glee, perhaps? Still... She misses him. I've never heard her admit that out loud before. In fact, that's not like her at all. Not like herself, huh? Come to think of it, she hasn't challenged me to anything today, either. Hmm. Something's gone on with Lucy. But I guess we'll find out what that is tomorrow. Alright then. Alright. Back with some more of Lucy's event now. Master Derek. Why do I have to stop working and go rest? Yes, I know I've worked several days straight now. But, but so have you. If you aren't going to take any time off, then neither should I. How many all-nighters did you pull through in the base prep? Only reason you're still on your feet is because you're riding the high of finishing a commission. Go get some rest. Taking proper time off is part of an apprentice's job. If I'm still only an apprentice, doesn't that mean I, I need to do more work to learn and improve? I can't afford to rest now. I, I want to be a master smith just like you. Iron and steel rejoice under your hammer. Customers always leave with a satisfied smile. That's the kind of blacksmith I want to be. Don't make me stop working. Let me help you with your next project, please. Fine. Do what you think is best. Thank you. After you've taken a nice long break. What? But why do I have to stop working? Because that's part of an apprentice's job. If I'm still only an apprentice, how can I afford to take the time to rest? Just gonna keep going around in circles, huh? And around and around they go. Still, it's not every day to see Martin get that worked up. What, 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 is, what does this have to do with Lucy's event? I'm kind of curious. Yuki dear, I have to apologize to you. I've been keeping a secret. A terrible secret. You see, sometimes I still go out adventuring and I've never told you. Twisting croissants in the kitchen reminds me of the good old days when I dispatch monsters with a simple flick of the wrist. And the warmth of the oven reminds me of the heat of battle. 
when it was life and de or death in that fiery volcano. Oh. With my old wanderlust all good and stirred up, I'd lie to you and go off on another quest. Can you ever forgive me? You silly dear. I've known about that for years. You'd always say you're off to forage for new ingredients. Did you think I wouldn't guess what you were really up to? Yuki. I understand that your old wanderlust flares up from time to time. You were once an incredible adventurer, after all. I'd be lying if I said I didn't mind. But it's never wise to tether a heart. Just promise me one thing, dear. No matter where you gallivant off to, promise me you'll always come back home safe and sound. I will, my love. I promise. The only place I've ever called home is here, right by your side. Nothing will ever change that. Most importantly of all, I never want to see you cry. Your smile brings more joy than all the treasures of the world. Randolph. Oh, Randolph. Aww. Yeah, that's enough of that. What the hell's going on down here now? A thousand humble apologies, Lady Beatrice. I don't know how I'll ever atone for my grievous sin. I knew that you would partake of these meals, and yet I... I used cheap ingredients. Day after day, I hunted for bargains, scouring the clearance racks and making thrifty purchases, only to cook from a cost-cutting recipe book. Though I went to great pains to make the dish re dishes resemble those prepared by a royal chef, they were in truth a peasant's fare. Just the thought that I've made you consume such poor quality foodstuffs torments my very soul. <laughs> oh, come now, Reinhardt. You needn't let this bother you so. In fact, I enjoy your cooking more than I did at any royal banquet at the castle. I always look forward to sharing meals with you. I'm excited to see what other frugal yet delicious food you're preparing in the future. Wow, Reinhardt takes his job pretty darn seriously. What a weird shit going on today. Oh, that was it? Just, just that? Oh, alright then. I don't know. I guess we'll find out what that has to do with it. Well, we're proceeding on with Lucy's event, and hey look, I got my first typhoon. Um, I really don't have anything worth losing on my farm, although I'm going to be sad about losing over on my farm, so, you know, it's it's fine. I got my level 10 turnip, and I got my onions, so, whatever. <laughs> why, 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 why are we doing this on a typhoon day, Lucy? What's wrong, Lucy? There's some serious wrinkles between your eyebrows. Um... Maybe it's just me, but I think there's something weird about the mirror my dad sent me. Huh? Weird? Yeah... Yeah, it happens when you look at your reflection in it. Suddenly, stuff you've been keeping to yourself. Thoughts, secrets, whatever, it all just come, kind of comes tumbling out. That explains why people are acting so weird. That sounds familiar. Who have you shown this mirror to? Well... Huh? Um, let me think. Reinhardt, Randolph, and Martin, I think? I knew it. No wonder they were acting so strangely. I'm starting to think there's some kind of spell on this mirror. Uh, oh, like a mummy's curse? <sighs> I sure hope not. Huh? You little hey, get back here! Give me back my mirror! Hey, Simone. Hello there. John, have you seen Lucy? Um... Yeah, but, um, a bird just stole her mirror. She went running off toward after... She went running off after it toward the east. Hmm. That could be an issue. Something the matter? I just got an emergency letter from my husband. Apparently, the mirror he gave her was no ordinary trinket. It was an enchanted tool used in ancient courts to ensure that the accused could speak only the truth. Worse yet, if you stare at it for too long, you risk losing the ability to lie. You'll only speak the absolute truth at all times. Uh-oh. I can see how that'd be a problem. 
At least Lucy already exa says exactly what she's thinking anyway. I doubt the curse will affect her much. Quite the opposite, actually. She swallows her true feelings far more often than you'd think. Huh? What? Never mind. My point is that the mirror is dangerous, and I'd like to dispose of it as quickly as possible. Could you tell Lucy to bring it home right away for me? Okay. Yeah, that's a not a great thing to have out and around. Oh, there she is. Alright, let me get out my cool new dual blades. 900 attack, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting some really good uh, dual blades in the, uh, the weapons now. Got some in there that are a thousand, but I don't have uh, the proper materials for them. I'm going to start needing ore calcum for some of them. For some of them. And uh, I don't think I have access to that yet. Lucy, what happened to the mirror? It's up in that tree. The dumb bird dumped it in its nest and took, then took off again. It's just about to climb up there and get it. Can we d get it down without climbing up? Hmm. We could knock it down if we had a stick or a branch. That'd bring the whole nest down with it. Why there's baby chicks in there? I don't want to hurt them. So knocking the nest down is out. It's your only choice is to climb up. How about you keep watching in case the bird comes back? I'll zip up there and grab the mirror. Sure. Okay, got it. Make it quick, John. Weird. You should she tried to turn this into a competition. Maybe she's still under the truth spell. Anyway, gotta get that mirror before the bird comes back. Hey, Lucy, I found it. Mirror's right here. Now I just have to get down and... John, watch out! Bird's back? Whoa! Hey, stop flapping at me! No. Oh. John! Ugh! Oh. Ah! Oh. John, are you okay? Yeah! I was probably a little bruised, but I'm fine. Hey. Oh crap, you scraped your elbow. Here, let me see that. Yeah, it's not bad, but you are bleeding. Let's get you patched up. Phew. There, that ought to do it. Good thing I had a first aid kit with me. Hardly surprising, you're a doctor's daughter. It's just a habit, since Julian's always finding new and inventive ways to go collect scrapes and bruises. Uh, <laughs> Good point. Still, you handle that bandage like a pro. I'm impressed. Thanks. When I was little, I really wanted to help Mom out, so I tried studying medicine. I figured if I get a sister, then we get to spend at least a little more time together. But I'm too much of a klutz to really be of any help. At least I can help you, John. That makes me glad. Yeah. Yeah, you were a big help. Thanks. You're welcome. And, um, I'm sorry. It's my fault you got hurt. Also, uh, I'm really sorry about how I acted when we first met. I've wanted to apologize for that for a long time. I accused you of being a weirdo for ages. It was a pretty messed up thing to do. It's okay, I understand. Thanks. You really are a nice person. You are helping me, even if it means getting battered and bruised. I know you've been busy, but you're always up for any challenge I throw at you. Even now you're listening, no matter how stupid I sound. The truth is, you've become super important to me. I'm really glad you came to Rigbarth, John. Thank you. Lucy. I can't believe I said that out loud. Stupid mirror. <laughs> now what am I going to do? It's making me see all this crap and I still can't shut up. 
Yeah, apparently that mirror had a spell on it. One that makes people tell the truth. It's so dangerous that Simone sent me to find you. She wants to dispose of it. Uh -huh. What, it really is cursed? Yeah. yeah, but see? When I fell from the tree, it cracked. I doubt the spell on it could survive that. What? Oh, gods! And everything I said was... me? Yep, you said it all on your own. Without any influence from the mirror. Ooh. Oh, jeez. Now I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> Don't be. I'm glad this happened. It makes me happy to hear what you really think. You're the best, John. As to the mirror itself, we can ask Derek to fix it. Nah. Well, that's not. That's a pretty dangerous artifact to have lying around. But we'll leave it the way it is. Even if it's broken, it's still a gift from my dad. Besides, I discovered something even more important. Huh? Anyways, let's head on back to town. Okay? Last one there is a rotten egg. Oh, yeah, that is the end of that one. Still got that King's Game one. I don't know what the fuck that is. So I guess we only have one of those sub-stories left. Just Beatrice's. I did want to see something real quick, though. I just wanted to see uh, what Beatrice's next event actually uh, includes, so we'll start that one up uh, in a little bit, because it is almost time for it to trigger. Just gotta wait another, what, uh, 10, 20 seconds? Probably by the time I get back over to the main road. I think it's just going to the restaurant for that one. Oh no, a bakery, I think, actually. And that wind is so fucking loud. I mean, no shit, it's a fucking typhoon. Still, I don't think anyone's gonna be leaving their houses today. Well, not anyone that doesn't have to, anyway. Makes sense. There we go. Here they are. Sweet buns, hot and fresh. Oh my, oh my stars and garters, they're magnificent. I had no idea you could be... You could bake bread in such a fashion. <laughs> We're thrilled that you're so happy with them. Isn't that right, dearest? That we are, my love. Although they are just regular old buns. Not at all, sir. Not at all. To think that you could transmute simple flour into something so marvelous. It's magic, I say. The magic of Randolph and Yuki. Oh, well, you aren't you a charmer? Why, if it isn't John? Welcome, welcome. It smells amazing in here. Like something just came right out of the oven. It certainly does, doesn't it? Gracious, how delicious they look. Give them a taste, won't you? You've come all this way after all. Right, Yuki? I suppose so. Indeed, Randolph. You too, John. Have yourself a bite. Really? I don't mind if I do. I'm grateful for your offer, but I must decline. You need to sell these, don't you? Oops, that's right. Big goods lover and me just went for it without thinking. Urge to eat. Rising. I... You've been gazing at them since they were but a wee bundle of flour, my dear. So here, you could have one on the house. Please eat up. Thank you. Then I will gladly take you up on your kind offer. And so will I. Time to eat. All aboard the Bun Express. The what? Oh, yes. Whoa. 
Wow, it's hot and fluffy. Better blown at first. <sighs> Why this bun? It is sweeter and moister than any cake I've ever tasted. It's simply scrumptious. My deepest and sincerest thanks to you both. I swear to you, someday I'll repay you for this kindness tenfold. <laughs> you exaggerate, my dear. That fresh baked bun sure was delicious. I'm glad Beatrice got to try it. I think I'd like to give it a try myself. Kneading the dough, that is. Uh... Oh, wait, Beatrice. They're not done proving! Uh... Ah! Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. It's just that buns and bread are both like tiny babies. Once you've prepared the dough, the dough, you must let it rest peacefully for a time. We're sorry, dear. My husband meant no harm. Letting the dough rise is a very important step, after all. I'm the one who ought to apologize. I got a bit carried away in my enjoyment. Thank you for everything today. Um... Would it be alright if I called upon you again? Of course, my dear. By all means. You're more than welcome. Don't you worry one bit about what happened. Wonderful. I look forward to our next meeting. Phew, what a relief. Seems like Beatrice really has grown used to life around town. Alright. Now we wait for the next part. All right, back with the next part of Beatrice's event. Should be part two of three. Hello. Afternoon, Beatrice. Back again, huh? Oh, how do you do, John? Welcome. <laughs> the young lady's been like this ever since she arrived. Is something wrong, Beatrice? Pardon me, but... Randolph? Yuki? I have a request for you. Would you be so kind as to teach me how to bake? What? Those buns from the other day truly impressed me. I could tell from the taste alone that you needed your hearts and souls into it. Hence why I'd like to cook up something of my own. Then I could share it with our neighbors as a way of showing my gratitude for all the kindness that they've shown me. Beatrice. I see. Hmm. Young lady, baking takes serious time and effort. We're Rigbarth's sole bakery. We have to bake for everyone in town. I should have known it wouldn't be a cakewalk. You have to prepare the dough, let it rise, then bake up. Bake it. You'd be a fool to try and tackle it alone. <laughs> Which is why I'll help you every step of the way. <laughs> oh, my stars. Randolph, you old rascal. Roll up your sleeves, Beatrice. We've got buns to make. Uh, to bake. Yes. Thank you. That's really nice, Beatrice. Yes. Indeed. I finally worked up the courage to ask. And it's all thanks to you. Huh? <laughs> Nothing. Now then, I must gather my ingredients tomorrow. Hey, I'd be happy to help you out. Thank you, but that's alright. These will be my buns, after all. I have to gather the ingredients myself. Please keep this between us. I would hate to spoil the surprise. Is that so? Well, I won't say anything. Later. While you're doing that, I should go talk to Simone. Oscar to assemble all the townspeople for a tasting. Go with my gratitude. Alright, let's go see Simone. Well now, Beatrice is baking some treats. Yep, would you mind calling people together for a tasting? Mm hmm Sounds great. I'll go ahead and let everyone in town know. Thank you very much. 
No need to thank me. The people of Rigbarth love a good time. Once everything's ready, I'll ask them to gather in the plaza. The great tree has been a symbol of our town for generations. It'll serve as a fitting place for her to meet and thank everyone. Thank goodness. Perfect. Now we just have to wait for Beatrice to finish baking. Feeling well? Alright, well, I guess that's everything for now. here, but I don't see anything popping up. Must be for another day. Alright, well, I'll be back if something happens. Alright, next part of the event. Here we go. Beatrice hasn't returned from the woods yet. I hope she's alright. I'm worried too, but she said she had to go solo. Not, not, not much we can do now. Something happened to Beatrice? Oh, John. Well, sort of. She went into the woods to gather fruit. Alone. Lucy and I tried to join her, but she took off before we could. We told her not to wander too far away from town, but still. I'm not sure she'll be okay out there. At least, not all not all on her own. You're right. That is worrisome. Beatrice said she was going to gather ingredients. I didn't realize she, that she planned to look for them in the woods. Maybe I shouldn't have kept this secret to myself after all. Don't worry. I'm gonna go check on her. Yes! Yes, please do. I'll rest easy if you're looking for her. All right, let's go find her. Still no sign of her. <coughs> Beatrice? That sound like it came from deeper in the woods. Oh boy. Unhand me this instant, you fiend! Are you trying to kidnap me? Beatrice! John? Hey, let her go! Well, that was easy enough. I just need to poke him with my sword. Are you hurt? N no, I'm unharmed. But are you alright? Wait, John, what are you doing here? What a mess. I see. Priscilla and Lucy sent you to find me. We've all been really worried about you. Let us save the discussion for later. More importantly, take a look at these. I picked them all by myself. I call them bee berries. Catchy, no? <sighs> Those are just wild strawberries. She looks so happy. I guess I won't say anything.
At any rate, I'm glad you're safe and sound. Um, about that. John, would you refrain from telling Reinhardt about this? He worries over me enough already. If he heard that I put myself in danger, I'm afraid he might overreact. That's right. I guess you're right. Fine, we can keep this between you and me. Hey, you're back! Thank goodness. So glad you're okay. You were worried about me? Of course we were. I mean, you really shouldn't just go wandering out of town, you know? If John hadn't sprung into action, we would have come to check on you ourselves. You're also... Yeah! Time to pinch those squishy cheeks. Whoa now, personal space! Oh? Oh dear. Jeez! Come on, Beatrice. That's all it takes to cheer you up. You can squish my cheeks anytime. <laughs> Maybe this is what Beatrice is really like. Wow. You picked so many wild strawberries. I'm glad we told you about your our favorite foraging spot. You gotta love fresh picked berry. But maybe they taste even better if we preserve them in syrup. Or made them into a jam. Ooh, how about jelly? Actually, these are for. Shh! It's a secret. Mm. Oh, you won't tell us? No way, you're not gonna give us the full story? Beatrice is safe, and she got her hands on the ingredients she needed. Now I just need to update Simone. Oh, it actually just took me right to 5 p.m. Well, there goes an entire day. I mean, not that I was really gonna... I was probably just gonna skip the rest of the day once I talked to everyone anyway, so... Eh, wh whatever. I guess that does it for now. So I guess we just wait until tomorrow. Okay, cool. Alright. This should be the final part of Beatrice's event, and then that's all the hard events done. Just need to focus on one now. I could go for the mob, but that's going to be way too much effort for me. So we'll be satisfied with just Ludmilla. Everyone, your attention, please. Thank you for joining us today. Beatrice will take it from here. How do you do, everyone? I am Lady Beatrice. Recently, I arrived in your town and asked you to accept me, which you did with open arms. Due to my inexperience with small town living, I've violated many a social norm. Yet for all the vexation I've caused, you've been patient with me. Beatrice. Lady Beatrice. Your Highness. She's really got a fire lit under her. Seriously. Girls cranky the intensive meter up to 11. So today, I would like to offer you all a token of my thanks. Please wait just a moment. Ooh. Whoa, look! Are those treats for us? They smell delicious. Uh, Did she go off and buy some sweets without me noticing? Amazing. You made these? Amazing. Hmm? Little rolls. Wait, no. What is this? Hmm? They look like sweet buttons, but what are they actually? <laughs> it was all the lady's idea. We didn't lift a finger. She kneaded the dough and prepared the strawberries herself. I was shocked when she told me her idea, but it really was quite something. Beatrice worked very hard on this. Well done, dear. And on that note, let's all enjoy her handmade buns. Scrumptious! <sighs> Guess I'll give it a try. I can't stop eating it. I'll have one too. Oh, this is great! It's both sweet and tangy. I know, right? The outside's crispy and the inside is fluffy. It's packed with strawberries preserved in syrup, strawberry jam, and strawberry jelly. I don't know how to describe it. 
joyous joy. Very berry bonanza. It's like there's a party in my mouth and all my taste buds are invited. That's amazing. Incredible. I had no idea that you could use the wild strawberries growing in the woods like this. <laughs> you layer the strawberry flavor in so many ways. Even at my age, I'm still learning new tricks. Truly astonishing. We never would have thought of this ourselves. No, that's preposterous. I asked so much of you. Wow. This is making my mouth water. You're the best, Beatrice. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. I'm ever so delighted to hear that you're enjoying them. To good friendships and great food. I'm sure even the great tree is surprised. It's watched over this town for many years, but it's never seen buns like these before. No lies here. How about we make it our local specialty? I think that just might work. <laughs> but only Beatrice can make these. I suppose so. That's right. We couldn't put something this special on the bakery's menu every day. Speaking of which, what do you call these things? Now that you mention it... Hmm. What are they called? Uh, oh, um... Any ideas? Beatrice should decide. Isn't that right? Yes, absolutely. In that case... These special buns shall henceforth be known as bee treats. I hope you all enjoy them as much as I enjoy living in Rigbarth. Seems like baking food to show her gratitude went down really well. For the berry on top, Beatrice had fun with it. I'm glad. Yeah, it all worked out very well. Hmm, how did this all happen right under my nose? I'm sorry for keeping this from you, Reinhard. I thought you might object to my plan. Of course I wouldn't. Entering the woods alone was a dangerous act. Please don't be upset with her. She was just trying to show her gratitude to the people of Rigbarth. Would you kindly try a bun? Hmm. What do you think? It warms my heart. Thank you, Reinhardt. I feel more grateful to you than anyone else. Oh, I'm certainly not worthy of such kind praise. But thank you. That situation cooled off nicely. I hope you'll forgive all the couple I, all the trouble I caused you, John. He helped you with this? Then I've let you both down. This all happened because of an oversight on my part. Whenever I think you're at Lady Beatrice's side, or you actually are at her side, I find that I end up paying less attention. <laughs> That's because John is such a reliable person. I don't know if I'd go that far. However... That being said, these bee treats are a thing of beauty. <laughs> How admirable that you made something so... <laughs> beatific. What? These buns have moved into tears? <laughs> Lest we forget, Simone gave me the go-ahead to make them a Rigbarth specialty. Well, look at you. You're a vital part of the community now. I am your unworthy baking servant. But in all seriousness, I too am struck by how much you've grown since we came to this town. Ahem. <clears throat> I have something to discuss with John. Reinhardt, if you would please? Yes. Yes, ma'am. <gasps> What's up? John, thanks to you, my buns were a smashing success. It means a great deal to me that I had this opportunity to bring delight to the townsfolk's hearts. I thank you from the very bottom of mine. You're welcome, Beatrice. <laughs> I'm fortunate to have a friend like you. Life is just a little sweeter with you in it. Yes! Likewise. Oh, that, that was a really sweet event. Really does make me want to go for Beatrice on my next playthrough. All right. So now, uh, that I've done all those, it's actually a moment of truth for me, because, uh, a little while ago I did get Ludmilla up to rank 7, so I can actually confess to her and she will have a chance to, to accept, um, 
reason I wanted the reason I held off on it was when I reached this level I didn't realize oh you can't be in a town event uh, otherwise they'll just always reject you so that sucks uh, now my main thing is tomorrow is a festival day so I'm wondering if that's going to impact it at all uh, so I'm gonna pause here and I'm gonna try uh, a few times because I could just reload if she doesn't accept uh, but if she doesn't after a few times then uh, I, I know it's not gonna work Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think this is gonna work. So, uh... Of course, now I gotta wait one more fucking day to do this shit. <sighs> so I'll see you guys on the festival day tomorrow, and uh, I'll try to confess again. Okay. So... I finally got a different response when I confessed. Um... <laughs> God, did this take a while? Because apparently, uh, if you confess, and they reject you, every time you do it, Every time you do it again, when you're at the same uh, friend point level, they will always reject you until you get them up to the next level. And good lord, what a fucking terrible thing it was grinding her up to another level since I accidentally saved after I did the confession. Uh, but luckily first try this time, so... Yay. Gosh, is this my reward for being a good girl? No, wait. Oh, I get it. This is a spicy little game, isn't it? You're trying to get me all hot and bothered by embarrassing me. Not that I mind a bit of public humiliation. <laughs> I'm serious. Let's go out. For real, please? <laughs> He's in love with me. Sweet honey dreams, I couldn't ask for more. Oh, wait. Calm down, self. Calm down. A little delayed gratification goes a long way. Uh, um, Ludmilla, you gonna answer me? <laughs> You're a greedy one, aren't you? My answer is, nope, not right now. You're gonna have to wait. I'll give you an answer tomorrow at 10 a.m. on Seaside Hill. <laughs> I need you to wait with bated breath and pine for me till then, okay? Uh, okay. See you tomorrow. Alright, so now we gotta wait another day. Seaside Hill tomorrow at 10 a.m. Glad, because I, I almost stumbled into a side story yesterday. <laughs> oh, that, that would have been bad. And I wouldn't have been able to, then she would have just rejected me automatically, too. Uh, Seaside Hill. Which one is that? I'm sure it'll pop up when it does. Alright, I'll cut till then. All right, let's head on over to Seaside Hill and see Ludmilla about her answer. Hi, Ludmilla. Have you had time to think, th to think things over? Ah, John, I've been waiting for you forever. Oopsies. Right, composure. <clears throat> You want to hear my answer to your, uh, question, right? Yes. Right. I want to know if you love me, too. Oh. You said it again! Oh, hmm. um. However shall I reply? Hmm... Not even I know for sure. Uh. Hey, uh... I know it's a little sudden, so if you don't feel the same way about me, then I promise to back off. Don't stress out about it. I'll be fine either way. No, no, no! Please don't say you'll back off. I'll go out with you. In fact, I beg you, please be my boyfriend. So you really want to date me? A succubus never goes back on her word. But what about you? Are you sure you want to be with... a monster? Yes, of course. The only one for me... is... you. Yay! Oh, baby! He said yes, he said yes! We're dating now. <laughs> Our future's gonna be all full of sugar and spice. And everything nice. How cute! You're so cute. Leave the rest. 
best to me. I'll teach you anything and everything you need to know about love. Um, I really appreciate it. Okay now, first things first. We need to decide what cute and adorable nicknames we're gonna call each other from now on. We need to make them beautiful, something that speaks to the deep and special bond that binds us. <laughs> oh yes, bonds that bind me so tightly they make my fingertips tingle. <laughs> anyway, so what do you want me to call you? <laughs> you know, so, same as before, darling. Oh, so that's what you're into, hmm? What do you want to call me from now on? Let's see... Oh, Milo's cute. Lulu is too. Let's go, Milo. <laughs> Just hearing that is like treating my heart to a full course dinner. Darling. Oh, darling. I can't wait to get closer to you. Same here. I'm really looking forward to getting to know you better. Alright, now we're dating Ludmilla. That means now we can go out on dates with her, too. That should, uh, make increasing our friendship points uh, a lot easier. So I believe in order to see her last, her, yeah, her fourth event, because every, every one of the bachelors and bachelors has a fourth event that's hidden behind, uh, when you start dating them. Uh, you need to do three special dates I remember seeing first. Um, so yeah, I'll have to figure out how to get those to trigger. I see with Mello walking around over there, so let me see. Let me talk to her, invite her out. Schedule a date for tomorrow. Morning, darling. This beautiful weather makes my flowers so happy. Darling. Oh, hiya, darling. Mmm, that potpourri smells really good. This new product? <laughs> yep, this is a test batch. Put the sachet by your pillow and you're guaranteed a good night's sleep. So good, in fact, you won't even dream. No dreams, huh? Yeah. Therein lies the problem with the test batch. Girls gotta eat. Oh, Darling. right. Can I... <laughs> oh, I can't invite her. Yeah. Oh, probably because... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll figure out how we do that. Pro probably because we just started dating today, so I can't ask her out right now. Alright then. Well, I'm gonna end this uh, series of... I don't even know what the hell to call this. Uh, this weird series of clips that I've recorded. Uh, as you can see, I'm in autumn now. All my crops are dead because I've just been going day to day trying to increase Ludmilla's relationship level. Um, but yeah, I'm going to put all this on hold for now. Because now that I've actually gotten all this done, all the hard events done, uh, we're dating Ludmilla now. So uh, we're going to finish the story. I actually think there's one more dungeon after the Seed Floating Fortress. Um, but next episode we will be finishing the story. Just because, you know, I, I, I've waited around long enough. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll just save it. I think I'll save that event over there too for later. Um, yeah. So, in the next episode, again, I don't know whether this is going to be like one episode or two episodes. I'll probably end up dividing it into two episodes or something. I don't know. Um, but regardless, in the next episode, we're going to be getting back to story. So that means uh, we're going to go through the floating fortress and then uh, whatever comes after. So, I'll see you guys then. Bye!